Hi, and welcome to question eight of the 2022 Junior Cert Higher Level Maths. So if you want to copy the notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetry at gmail.com and like and subscribe to get access to more playlists. So we're looking here at trigonometry. There are lots of words, so let's take our time and read through it. Um, there's 10 marks for part A, um, but it's on a B split, so there's not very many. It's really just the mid partial, so no marks mid partial four marks and then four marks of ten. So we're going to aim at least to get the four off the bat. Now the diagram below shows two vertical buildings A and B and the diagram is not to scale. Mary stands at the top of building A. She is 220 meters above the ground. She wants to work out the distance marked Y and Z in the diagram. So this is Y here. This is Z. We're told that this is the 220 meters above above ground. Um, so she's looking for Y, which is the distance from the top of building A to the bottom of building B. So top of building A, bottom of building B. Okay. And the height of building B, which is this larger building here. Now, Mary measures the two angles that are marked so 35 degree is the angle of depression from the top of, of A to the bottom of B. And then um, building B is the height of elevation from the top of B to the top, so A to the top of B. Mary, okay, let's go. I think I've said everything there. Um, work out the size of angle C. Now it is a 90 degree triangle here. Okay, so actually, that's actually pretty handy, I think. Thinking the answer next page, I've done this way harder. So I just realized as I look at now, 180 degrees is equal to all three angles. So it's 90, and that's the 90 degree angle down here, plus uh, 35 plus C. They're doing the maths of this, so they can just add the 90 and the 35 is 125. Then I want to get C on its own, so I'm going to take 125 away here to get rid of it. Do it to one side, I have to do it to the other. They cancel, and left with 180, take away 125 is 55. I'm sure I'm right there. 55. Okay, degrees is equal to C. That was fairly handy. I actually put in the formulas for um, the trigonometric ratios and Pythagoras and didn't need them. Um, and I'll show you here in the next page that I used. Let's go through it, no harm. So the trigonometric ratios there are the relationship between the different sides. Um, in relation to any angle. So I've identified on the diagram that if this is the angle C I'm looking for, well then this side here is called the opposite. This side down here is the adjacent and the side across the right angle, the 90 degree is the hypotenuse. So I look and then go, can I use um, sine? Now, even though I use A because that's what the treatment ratios usually use, um, I, d I don't have that, so I'm looking for. I do have the opposite. I don't have the hypotenuse. Now, I could use Pythagoras to find it, but that would be more work. So uh, it's not really going to work for me. Now, with the cosine ratio, um, I'm, in, I'm relating the adjacent to the hypotenuse. So again, I'm looking for the angle. Have the adjacent, don't have the hypotenuse. So I'm in the same situation. I could use Pythagoras to get more information and then use it. Now, tan, I'm looking for the angle. Okay. I have the opposite, I have the adjacent. So I have two of the three things, therefore it will work. Okay, so I identify what the opposite is, what the adjacent is, write out my formula, substitute in the different values. So the tan of some number, some angle, is relates to this particular number here. Now that number is a fraction, I'm not sure what it is in decimal form. It doesn't matter. If I use the calculator and find inverse tan of this number, which I do here, it tells me that the angle is is this, and then I round it to the nearest whole number, which is 55 degrees. And that's it. So look, I did it way harder in the notes than I probably needed to, but no harm. It's not wrong. It's just a different way to do it, just longer. Now, part B here says, Mary works out the horizontal distance between the two buildings is 154 meters. Okay. Um correct to the nearest meter as shown. 
and they said use the, the theorem of my Pythagoras. Now straight away I'm going to write it down. Okay, it's in the maths tables now. Taking a screen grab of that just for the notes uh, down here, just so we have it handy. Um, to work out the distance y on the diagram. Now that's y. So I generally would personally draw out the diagram just to help me make sense of it. So that's the right angle. That's the hypotenuse. That's what I'm looking for. I'm told this side is 220 and this side here is 154. Now, we, I, I personally use the hypotenuse, but that in the formula is the C value. So if I know that C is what I'm looking for, I'm going to call this one A. It doesn't actually matter which I call A or B. So I'm going to call A is 220 and then B is the other value. Uh, that's what 154. So I have two of the three things. So it's C squared is equal to 220 squared plus 154 squared. Now I could use the calculator and you should. Okay, I'm going to go to the answer here. Um, so that's where we left off, just here. I put that through the calculator and I got 72,116. Then to get rid of this square, I'm going to square root. Okay, that, if you do the opposite of something, it will get rid of it. So the square root and the square will cancel in the next step and you'll be left with C. If I do it to one side, I have to do it to both. So I end up having to look up, the using the calculator, the square root of 72,116, and it gives me the answer of 268.54. That's my hypotenuse, but the question does say round it to the nearest meter. So the five here is what matters. Five and greater than the number before it goes up by one. So I get the 269 meters. And that's it. So they told us what Pythagoras was. Um, so at least we should be able to write down the formula. And then if we can put any number in, you're going to be jumping up here to the four marks. Okay. Now we want to be trying to get up to the 10, because if you can sub them in, then this calculator work. We should end up here. Yeah, probably here. Okay, that's probably the seven marks. And then finishing it off is the 10. And if you don't round it, you get deducted one mark um, from four marks. So that's that. Now question 8C says, use trigonometry to work out the value of Z, the height of building B. So if we recall, again, I put the diagram in here, that's Z. Now I know that up to this point here, it's 220, okay? Because I know there's 220 up to that, that height there. What I'm really looking for is this extra little bit. Now this bottom triangle here, this one isn't really going to be useful, but it's this triangle here that is. So if I kind of quickly draw it out to, to make it clearer with the worst diagram ever for a right angle triangle, um, that's my right angle there. Okay, this is 20, and that's what I'm looking for. Now, Pythagoras won't work here um, because I only have, actually, I, I have arguably no side until you kind of look at the diagram and go, well, if it's 154 from here to here, isn't it 154 from here to here? So that's 154, which on my diagram is the same thing. Now, Pythagoras still won't work because I would need to know two of the three things. Like if I knew the hypotenuse here, I could just use Pythagoras to find the, the height here and then add that value to the 220. But um, if I use the sine cos tan ratios, so sine of an angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, cos of an angle is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan of an angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. Now, if this is the angle I have, okay, well then this here is the opposite. This is the hypotenuse, this is the adjacent. So I know I'm looking for the opposite. So opposite, let's just say question mark. The angle is equal to 20 and the adjacent is equal to the 154. So which formula Will, will work for me. And if I, if I start the problem solving with sine, okay, I, I have the angle. Now, I don't have the opposite. That is what I'm looking for. Um, but I don't have the hypotenuse. So I only know one of the three things. This won't work for me. Now, because, again, I have the angle. I have the adjacent. And if I do use this, I'll find the hypotenuse, which I then could use Pythagoras. But I want to go there directly. So maybe that'll work for me. Now, tan, I know the angle. I'm looking for the opposite. I know the adjacent. So I know two of the three things. Tan will work for me. So tan of 20 is equal to, now I could use O for opposite or just X, whatever I want to do. Just that's what I'm looking for. 
divided by the adjacent was the 154. Now to solve this, I want to get rid of the 154 here. Best thing I can do is multiply the top by 154. Anything top and bottom will cancel. If I do it to one side, I have to do it to both. So I'm left there with 154 tan 20. Now we don't bother writing the operator, we could, it doesn't matter. Is equal to these two things cancel, uh, is equal to x. Now that's a calculator job, just on the notes here, um, I found that 154 times tan 20 is equal to 56.05. So I know that this here is, if I can write in there, is 56.05. But if you remember, I already knew that up to that point was 220. So I finish off by going 220 plus the 56.05 is the total height of building B. And I got 276.05. The question says round to the nearest meter. That's 276 meters. Let's see into question eight. So as always, if you want to copy the notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. And please like and subscribe to get access to more playlists. See you on question nine.